I would like to show you a 2D game I made as a submission for a game jam. It was actually the first uh, game in my challenge of making a new open source game every week, open source projects. Not everything has to be always a game. Nevertheless, I'm Sir Fancy and let's uh, let's have a look at it. So first of all, it's open sourced. It's available to you right now. You can download it as it is to web it, whatever you want. It's under MIT license. So as long as you credit it, you can use it for any kind of a commercial or non-commercial uh, um, endeavor, behavior, whatever you want to do with it. So let's uh, have a quick look at uh, how it works. Uh, as you may have noticed, I have used uh, 4.27 uh, Unreal because uh, and, um, I was originally thinking about actually making a build for Android games and that's uh, not impossible with Unreal 5, but it completely eliminates you being able to use any low-end Android devices, which this would quite nicely run on anything. So yeah, that was uh, the reason behind my decision. And also it's very easy to port from 4.27 to 5. It's quite impossible to port for, uh, for a downgrade. Uh, so yeah, that would be a reason why I chose this. Uh, never, Even though I, for almost everything now I use uh, 5.1. Uh, nevertheless, let's have a look at how it looks like. Uh, we can see the game, you can play it, you can kind of drag from this uh this circle in the middle it's a uh i was thinking about a combination of somewhere between a snake and angry birds that's why i called it a snakey bird i believe something something stupid like that where you can drag anywhere and it's gonna push a physics impulse on our main main circle uh, once you do that you can collect these little points and they are gonna follow you and not just follow you they are gonna actually keep pushing on you because they are, all of it is physics driven so that means they are all trying to follow the uh, follow your location and the goal is to get as close to player uh, to collect as many points as you can so right now we can say have six points and the more points you collect the then it's gonna uh, start these obstacles from all sides and each time you touch the obstacle you're gonna die and reset the game that's kind of the idea so, so let's see if you can connect a bit more of them but i don't suppose you have to see that you can download and play the game on each as well let's maybe just look at how the game is architected so you can uh, maybe do something with it yourself so all right uh, if you look at the blueprint it's fairly simple architecture we have here some sort of a game mode some sort of a menu for score and uh, then we have a pawn and pawn is used here just basically as a camera i don't think i'm quite doing much else on the pawn oh except i'm wrong apparently i do have a lot of a lot of the logic it's been a it's been a little bit of a time before uh, since i made it i'm just now recording the video i thought that i'm handling it on the snake head well whatever so uh, we have here two hierarchies of uh, blueprints. We have here a enemy. We have here enemy main. That's uh, basically just a uh, enemy that's rotating on tick. Uh, of course, we are running here a delta. Uh, we are of course running it on tick. But before I built it, I basically set a maximum frame rate to like 60 or something like that, so it can go over that. So it's not gonna go crazy. It's all limited by the frame rate. Uh, then we have our start moving for the obstacle, which is basically just gonna set up our target location and our time, how long, uh, so how quickly should it move and when should it move and where should it move and just simply go there. Uh, over time is randomized now I see. On the overlap, it's gonna cast to snake main, which is a main part of the snake body uh, and then just restart the level. Also some rotation on tick. Uh, all of the other enemies are basically just a child blueprints that have adjusted the variables here. So what ta what over time doesn't matter, but uh, what target location is it moving between? It was the easiest way how to quickly set it up. Could have made it just public. I don't think I even needed to make it as a, a child blueprints. Now I look at it, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, uh, then actually important part is our snake. So we have here a snake main and snake head and parts. So snake main is uh, handling most of the logic. And then if you look at the snake parts and snake head, that's mostly to just differentiate between that. Snake head is the actor that you are controlling as a player that does not have any additional logic uh, up, uh, over a snake main. So let's maybe have a quick look at a snake main first. So we start by just saving a relative scale, probably for some animation purpose later. 
and then we have the logic handled on component hit so what should happen when the component hit uh, that uh, first of all we want to make sure that the hit was big enough we can have here a certain threshold so that means the velocity of the hit when it actually uh, collided with the wall was uh, above certain threshold otherwise we just spam it like crazy then uh, if it's uh, just lower threshold you can play sound effect if it's higher threshold uh, 10,000 here it's just 2,000 and 10,000 uh, it's gonna also play a animation which is basically just scale up and down just looks quite nice you can see it right here if i hit it something it does this nice pop uh, pop in pop out animation then if we look at our snake parts uh, they have those are these little uh, yellow these those are these yellow uh, little balls that we spawn here and you collect them so here we adjust the logic we over completely override our component hit and we make sure that uh, when it where it casts to snake uh, main it happens only once and it's gonna set itself as a snake part that's currently being used and it's gonna spawn a new point in our player, uh, player pawn with an interface message uh, then it's gonna make our snake part valid that's why we are setting it here because we set it as a target advantage of doing it this way is that uh, and it, that it does not matter which snake part hits, um, not which snake part, which snake uh, body part, snake, uh, which snake main hits the actor, it's gonna follow that one. So for example, if I uh, have these ones following me and manage to hit the other balls with this one that's following me, it's gonna follow this one, it's not gonna follow the main hat. This leads to some kind of an interesting, unpredictable behavior that I quite liked. After that is, after we know that this is valid, so it means we have set our current snake part, it's gonna start movement, and that's basically gonna be taking a forward vector and adding it as a force towards our sphere. That forward vector is multiplied by a distance, so that basically means uh, the further it is from the uh, target snake part, the higher it's gonna be the force that's being added to it. If it's uh, very close to it, it's basically non-existent, so it just moves uh, just... Uh, just a little bit i have to of course hit it first now we can see it's leaving moving just a little bit and if we move far from it it starts on speeding up there we go all right now to the prior pawn so we have here our pawn camera and here we have event spawn new point that's fairly straightforward it's counting our score it's updating text in the hut it's checking for the obstacles and uh, we're checking for the obstacles is basically a function that's gonna count our uh, that's gonna take our score if our score is higher than certain threshold it's gonna spawn a it's gonna trigger the enemy uh, enemy main and that's just set with our first second third and fourth uh, attack that i'm using to differentiate between them uh, it plays a new sound effect to kind of let player know hey new danger is coming and just triggers their movement and always happens only once we don't want it to over trigger and for our spawning and for our spawning next point uh, we have here just enough mesh we just try to cover this we should see that uh, i specified a zone where it can spawn and in that spawn zone it's gonna find a location that's a random location uh, in the nav mesh the distance from the current actor from the current snake head should be at least 150 units because i don't want it to just spawn right next to it it will be quite boring and then it's gonna spawn a new snake part uh, set its size set its location pretty pretty straightforward now for the thing that could be probably most uh, complicated and interesting is uh, setting up the visuals and actual physics for triggering this uh, logic that we are dragging on the screen. So what I do is to take a mouse position scaled by DPI. That's basically calculating where my mouse is uh, relative on the position. It would, it would probably need a little bit more work if I was actually using, if I was actually having to push it on Android, but this works quite fine. And it seems like the resolution doesn't influence it, which is why it's scaled by DPI. Uh, then when we press on it, it basically saves that current location at the moment I click on it. Uh, what it also does is activate the Niagara particle effect, which is just a simple drag from one point to other point. It's a ribbon particle effect. Uh, then we look forward and we are going to use it, convert mouse location to a world space and set that our beam start, which is uh, for our beam, this position. I turn it into variables so we can just set them dynamically. 
Uh, then once you let go and stop dragging, you are gonna take the start location, subtract from it current mouse location, uh, do some fancy math to make it work the way we want it, and actually uh, have the nice gameplay element. Uh, use it as a target impulse, make it into a vector for x and y, because all our physics is right now locked in between x and y. Uh, axis. It can never go to Z. It would go completely crazy and wouldn't really work as a 2D game very well. And then it simply takes it as a, an add as a f impulse to a snake head reference and then deactivates our Niagara. Uh, what you may also notice that uh, while I'm holding it, it's still updating in runtime and that's happening on our kick. If we find here our kick. It's uh, adjusting our beam end while it is moving it. And uh, I actually should have here some sort of a check that it does it only when uh, I am displaying it. That's uh, my mistake here. But this is basically just converting mouse location to world space in the same way as we do it on the start. All right, here on the beam start, here we are adjusting our beam end. So it's just always updating the end location of our ribbon. Uh, where my, our mouse is as long as I'm holding it. Uh, again, there should be a check, but here we are just uh, activating and deactivating it near Gara. So it's not <laughs> setting it if it's uh, deactivated. Uh, for visuals, that's, there is nothing too complicated, just a bunch of emissiveness and uh, some post process to make it look nice. I have here a light source, I'm not sure if I even need here a light source. I don't think so. Well, oh yeah, I do, because I have... Uh, this floor with a material which is also pretty simple just taking a texture coordinate it's just taking a scale of texture coordinates for our grid a texture grid that's from unreal pack and uh, blending between them using it as a mask to set up our location i could have honestly i could have just made this unlaid and get rid of the lighting uh oh very much so oh no then it wouldn't affect the background actually well there's a bunch of things that could have been done for optimization but uh, this is so light that we don't really have to worry about it uh okay uh, that's about this for uh, that's about it for this uh, short project again you can download it on github and if you like all these open source projects i do uh, as under campaign raptor i would appreciate you checking out patreon uh, every support is always nice and just like share and all this stuff with the video uh, you can of course fork this repository use it to make your own game or add it to make a bigger open source game so that's all up to you all right sort of fancy out